grace and for your kindness towards us. And even when we are undeserving and you sometimes step aside because of our stubborn ways, you are still watching over us. God, you're amazing. I ask you now to feed us from your throne room. Send a message through your servant boy to the heart of men and women here and in virtual space. Thank you, lovely Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke. I talk about an uncommon faith. Chapter 8, there's a story that I'd like to focus on between the verses 40 and 48. They're an uncommon faith. We read together Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 48, and seeing that you've been sitting down for a while, I ask you to stand as we read the Word of God, and so that your blood can keep flowing and you can have energy as we move forward. And we read together, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had a one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her livings on what? And neither could be healed of any. We continue reading together. Came behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Hmm. Jesus said, who touched me? When everybody denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. When the woman saw that she could not hid, or hide, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her daughter, Be of good courage. Thy faith made thee whole. You're going to sit down in peace. Jesus returned from Gergesa to the western shores. He found the multitude waiting for him on the seaside. And he made way to Levi and Matthew's house. Then come Jairus saying, I have a, a child that is dying and I need your help. And Jesus is moving in the direction because a prayer was made a while ago. And he told the people to ask for what you want and it shall be given to you. So Jairus saw him face to face and made a face to face prayer prior request. Come and heal my child. He is dying and I need your help. And with, with that Jesus moved in the direction to answer a prior but it seems like something kept him from reaching there in time. And so, so, so he, the crowd was thronging him. They have a thousand and one request of Jesus and he is moving in the direction to answer that request. Everybody was surrounded him sometimes it looks like we be making some prayers but Jesus is on the way but something seems to be holding him back sometimes he send an angel on the way like a case of Daniel 
praying and fasting for 21 days. But the angel was held back from the day Daniel started to talk to God. The answer was sent to him immediately. But the devil had him mid-here. And, 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 and that battle seemed to be going nowhere. Daniel is praying. He's agonizing. He's asking God. But the devil is holding back the answer and Jesus himself stepped out and took over the battle and sent the angel to answer Daniel's prayer that he may fast no longer sometimes you talk to God and ask him for something it seems that it's taking a long time it's not that your God is deaf and cannot hear but sometimes he's surrounded sometimes he's surrounded by circumstances but you just keep on pressing and keep on praying keep on hanging on in there you never give up Amen. and even when things get worse like the death of your child keep on believing but there was a woman from the day Jairus child was born she had been sick and every year, Jairus' child lay in the bed. She's been bleeding. There's something about this woman. We focus on her problem, but I focus on her faith. She's got an attitude that every child and every young person and every senior person here need to possess. She's got an attitude. My Bible tells me that she spent all her living. It means that she was determined to be healed. And she was going to try every herb she hears about and every medication she hears about. And she spent and moved from doctor to doctor, from physician to physician. And everyone only promised her after this medication you will be fine. But she seemed to be getting worse. She was a worst case scenario. She had hemorrhage. Her constant bleeding often leave her weak. Her constant bleeding sometimes also make her leave her breathless. She's hardly able to walk. She loses, she's lost all her friends because the Bible said in Leviticus, Leviticus 15 that one in that condition is ceremonially unclean or not to come into the temple or not to come into the public or not to touch anybody. Neither should anyone touch or handle her, her furnitures lest they become unclean. I would not want to be in that case. One of the worst thing about COVID was that you are dying and no one can come to help you. You're in the hospital, you're struggling and not even your wife can be there. Your husband or your children can be there to lay a hand on you and offer some kind of comfort they ask you to go into social distancing and worst isolation so you understood well you can't understand because you've never had covid but you can just imagine what this lady was going through she ought to be isolated she can't come to the church to hear the songs of Zion anymore. Her church family can't visit her anymore. But she's often heard them talk about this man called Jesus. That there is no sickness around town that Jesus stopped behind. There was no cancer that he couldn't heal. No diabetes that he couldn't heal. No AIDS that he couldn't cure. There was absolutely no sickness that this Jesus, even death, was not hard for him. 
when she heard that Jesus was making his passing around, going in circuits around town, when she heard that Jesus was coming around, she said, I am going to see this Jesus and nothing is going to hinder me. No family, no friend, no priest, no pastor, no elder, no community member. There is no sickness even though I am ceremonially unclean. I am not going to be able to stand up and talk to him because I am weak and I can't stand up to walk. But if I can't run, I'm going to walk. And if I can't walk, then I'm going to crawl. And if crawling I may reach Jesus I'm gonna reach him one way or the other I've been determined 12 years that I'm not gonna die this way and here comes this Jesus one more try I can't walk so I'm gonna crawl Jesus I'm coming towards you as she gets into the crowd I imagine a rude little boy kicked her and said woman you should not be here but kick hurt or no hurt I'm coming to see just Jesus wait for me Jesus I'm coming as the crowd pushes Jesus distance away she said Jesus I'm still coming I'm gonna die trying I'm gonna keep pushing it is my life and my health it's my salvation Jesus I am coming wait for me Jesus wait for me wait for me I'm coming Jesus as she draws nearer someone pushes Jesus further but she's not giving up I rather die trying I'm coming on Jesus as she gets closer she said all I need to touch is the border of that garment. I can't reach his legs, but if I get to the border, hallelujah, with the last ounce of energy, she made the final one, two, three, here I come, Jesus, hallelujah. The Bible said immediately, blood stopped flowing, blood stopped lose just stop losing blood energy immediately flows in her body she stood upright for the first in a long time while she was getting excited jesus halt the crowd the crowd stopped all heaven stopped for one scrap of humanity jesus said who touched me and mota Massey peter said who you asked who touched you? Look at the people pushing you from the seaside. Everybody brushing you all over the place. Jesus said, I didn't ask who brushed me. Who touched me? That kind of touch is unusual. That kind of touch is uncommon. That kind of touch causes something to come out of me without my permission. Who touched me? That kind of touch causes God to answer without thinking. Did you hear me what I said a while ago? That kind of touch calls for an automatic answer from heaven. That faith is not common or shallow. That faith comes from deep down within. That faith is everything you've got. It has to receive an answer. God knows no no to that kind of faith every time you expresses that faith God got to come down God got to do something who touched me the woman trembling said I did it's 12 years now and I decided I was going to do this she looked for a rebuke but instead she saw the loving eyes of Jesus piercing her through. Jesus said, woman, your faith made you whole. Go in peace. It's your faith that made you whole. If you are going to make heaven your home, You've got to have a faith like this. You've got to have an attitude like this. Some of us focus on every difficulty and we stop. Every business we start, the more challenges we find, the more we give up. 
We start walking with Jesus and here comes a problem. We stop walking. You are not going to make heaven your home without that kind of faith that is uncommon. You need to get to the place where you start shaking off what did not work and keep moving. A marriage that didn't work, stop mourning over it, shake it off and keep moving. You, 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 you've got losses that you can't even count them. You've got to shake them off and keep moving forward. Stop dwelling on who hurt you and how you was hurt when you were a child and a mother that never cared and a father that didn't care and a niece and a cousin and a family members and neighbors you need to shake off those negative feelings and keep moving on stop counting your scars my brothers and sisters God knows how to turn scars into stars so focus on the stars and leave the scars stop being afraid your fear is your greatest downfall in life you need to get up and have faith P replace fear with faith and keep moving on stop speaking about negative things otherwise if you keep being negative you will become negative wake up to a new day wake up to a new attitude i tried this doctor it didn't work but i'm gonna die trying I tried this job and it didn't work, but I'm going to die trying. I'm not going to throw the towel in because I'm not dead until I'm dead. Face your health issues and stop playing dead. Fight every sickness, you better die trying. Face every storm with a smile of faith because God knows how to carry you through the storms of this life. Financially bankrupt, you shall rise again. Tell yourself I'm going to rise again. I'm not going down to stay down. But I'm going down so that I can come up. The, mo the mountains may be rough. But it's easier for me to climb the rough side of the mountain. For it's hard to climb the smooth side. There is nothing to grip on. You can only climb the rough side. So life may be rough. Your goings may be tough. You use every block to step higher. Step higher. Step higher. Keep on climbing. When you get on top of the mountain, the wind blows cool up there. You finally reach your destination. All the struggles are over. Hallelujah. It's a happy ending. Change your attitude. When misfortunes happen to you, find a new way out of it. A new outlook. Your breadwinner die, cry and get up and start winning bread. Yes. Don't sit down. That attitude will take you nowhere. Rise up and make a new start. Amen. You're losing this battle with addiction for years. It has been preventing you from the water grave of baptism. And you're fearful it might prevent you from the kingdom. We'll find a new attitude, addiction or known addiction. I'm going to be with just Jesus. I can't help myself. No pastor can help me. No member can help me. Don't stop me when I'm coming. For I'm coming to the cross. I am poor and weak and blind. I'm counting all but loss. I shall full salvation find. I am trusting Lord in thee. O oh, thou Lamb of Calvary, I'm coming. Fight to suppress the bad temper you have. The anger that's destroying your family's happiness. Your kids ain't smile no more when you come home. They're looking for a scold and a rebuke. They can't wait to reach 18. And you'll never see them again. You go to church every day. But if you're going to heaven, they don't want to be there. Because you've got a bad temper. You don't know how to smile, and even the people at church are afraid of you. Only God is, even the devil is afraid of you. you, 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 you you've got to be transformed. You've got to be changed. You've got to get to the place where you become guilty and humble. You've got to tell yourself, I'm not going to die this way. 
I'm going to gain this victory. If by fasting and prayer this one come, let it come. But my weakness shall not prevent me from walking through the pearly gates. I'm determined and I'm going to do everything in my power with divine power. Human and divine come together. There is nothing in hell that can stop them. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. And even if that's a terminal disease in your body, you're not dead yet. And even when I'm dying, I'm smiling. Because I know just over the mountain, in the promised land, lies a holy city built by God's own hand. As my weary footsteps gain the mountain's crest, I can view my homeland. Oh, I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm carrying a faith. I'm walking with a faith that is greater than fear. And that faith wins my battles. That faith caused God to move in my direction. And I tell you this. When God moves on someone's faith, something automatically changes. When faith gains a victory, a struggle that you've been having is not a struggle anymore. When faith gains victory, what took years to happen, happen in a fraction of time. When faith gains a victory, dreams that you long dreamed now comes through. When faith gains victory, closed doors all of a sudden begins to be open. When faith gains victory, David the least become David the greatest. When your faith gains a victory, your enemies become footstools. Lions tremble at your presence. Fiery furnaces become air-conditioned units. Raging seas become calm. When faith gains victory and nobody becomes somebody, you didn't qualify, but God make you in charge. Not the most favorite or the most qualified, but they make you ad advisor. Couldn't get out of debt, but God increased your income. Couldn't get favor from anybody, but God put you in the heart of others. When your faith gains a victory, he gives you a job you didn't qualify for. When your faith gains a victory, he pays a bill from a fish's mouth that you couldn't know how and you wouldn't know how to get that money to pay that bill. God just work a miracle when faith gains a victory brothers and sisters your tears are dried up and God gives you a smile in the midnight hour. You walk away singing victory is mine. Victory is mine. You see some people walking around like they're crazy. You don't understand what's going on in their heart. <laughs> Sometimes they come to your church and their hallelujah is louder than everybody hallelujah. Don't trouble them. You leave them. They come to church and they're praising God like they're crazy. It is because something was going on that they couldn't get through. And this love that Jesus break through for them. They enter the gates with thanksgiving in their heart. They start skipping and singing victory is mine. <laughs> Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. For victory today is mine. You don't know where they are coming from. You don't know how many prayers they pray. If you're all Jamaicans, I would tell you this. But since that you are not, I'm still going to tell you. And a one prayer may pray. Pray it at night and I pray it a day. Every time I get down on my knees, the devil got to tremble. Yes. Amen. When your faith is uncommon, you are unique. Amen. I walk here through this morning about the story of Ruth. I focus on Naomi. But Ruth had a faith in that God that she never met. When she said to her mother-in-law, your God will be my God. Right now, I'm going to change my religion. Immediately, I'm going to change my church. Because you're, you have something in you that I want. And it's not about what you have materially because you had nothing when you came here. But there is something deep down inside of you that I want. So I'm going to go to your temple 
and worship your God that I may get it. Her faith in that unknown, unseen God turned her circumstances around for the rest of her life. When Caleb and Joshua, along with 12 spies, went down to view the promised land, they came back to Moses and 10 of them said, Moses, the land is beautiful. It's just as how Abraham told us. It's flowing with milk and honey. It's beautiful over there. The grapes are so large. Everything is perfect for us to live. It's a fertile place, but... We saw some giants over there. When we look up on them, we are like grasshoppers before them. There is no way out. Let's turn back. And Moses paused to ponder. They strengthened their argument and spread it around. Dare not enter in. You're all going to die. It took two men of uncommon faith. Men who look at where God has been carrying us from. Men who took God by his words and his promises. Men who don't act based on feelings but on the word of God. Men who were willing to live their lives on the thus saith the Lord and die for it. Caleb and Joshua said, Moses and the people, yes, giants are over there and we cannot deny that. But my God, the same God who parted the Red Sea, my God, the same God who walked before us in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Don't you see? He is so tall. He touches not the earth. He is in the sky. He is greater and taller than those giants. We might be grasshoppers, but we don't serve a grasshopper God. He is a giant God. We are not going there to fight on our own. He will fight for us. We are not going there to open doors. He will open them for us. If he could make the bitter waters of Mara sweet, if he could carry water out of the rock, then the same God can defeat the giants. Let us go forward. With enough of their speaking, they were convinced Two men of uncommon faith caused the people of Israel to reach the promised land. Had they followed the multitude, they would be lost. They would not have made it. But my brothers and sisters, we've got too much commoners inside the temple. We've got too much common faith inside here. We've got to learn how to keep pressing and keep pushing. But we are not going to give up until Jesus makes through. Amen. Amen. If you're going to serve this God... That's the kind of faith you're going to need. I passed through, through many individuals who want to come and live their lives the Christian way. They want to serve this Jesus. But their greatest fear is that they're going to turn back. Let me tell you this. God did not give you that fear. The devil gave you. Can I repeat that? Yeah, I know you're sitting in your home and you're listening. What did preacher said a while ago? Whenever God calls you to give your life to him and you find yourself being afraid of falling back, that's the devil. Amen. For my Bible tells me that God never gave me the spirit of fear. So if I don't get the spirit of fear from God, I got it from the devil. I've got the spirit of power Amen. and a sound mind. Amen. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. Brothers and sisters, I talk to you about men of uncommon faith. Little David. When little David saw the great Goliath, everybody was complaining. He's a giant. He's too big for us to take him down. Little David said, this uncircumcised Philistine come to defy my God. 
He is not too great to hit. He is too great to miss. All I need is small stones with a mighty God. God knew how to give the stone the right push to take a giant down. It was not a normal human being blow. God seems to follow that stone and push that stone into Goliath that caused him to fall down. When you put that on common faith and walk out and face your enemies, God decide I'm going to match that faith. I've seen some people come to Jesus and I've heard the story of some. This lady made a step out. Oh, mercy. She came to the evangelistic series while the preacher was preaching and making strong appeals and appealing and appealing and the Holy Ghost was working in her heart like he's working inside here. And she got up that night and walked down to the altar and she was determined that I'm going to follow the divine call. And they told her about her boyfriend that she was living with. And she said, okay then, I'll fix that. The next night she came with some bags with her clothes and her kids. And she came to the altar and she said, here they are. And I'm not living there anymore. I want to be baptized. I'm not going back. This Jesus is too great. They baptized her. The evangelist was walking through the city of Montego Bay when someone stopped her and called, stopped him and called to him and said, Sir, you remember me? And the preacher looked at her and she quickly said, I am the lady who came to your altar that night with my bags and my clothes and my kids. I just want to let you know I don't walk anymore. The car that I'm in is my car and the guy who's driving is my chauffeur. That was an uncommon faith that God had to respond to. I was preaching in St. Elizabeth and this lady came up one night. She listened to the sermon and she said, I want to be baptized. But the community members knew she was living with a gentleman. And she said, okay, I'll go deal with that. She came back and she said to them, well, I have moved out last night because I need this Jesus. I've moved out. Moved out. She got baptized. The Tuesday evening I heard after my preaching that someone is here to see me. And someone whispered, is the gentleman, the lady who was living with his hair. He said, okay, tell him to sit in the vestry as soon get there. I don't know what his mission is on, but I'm here on a mission for the king of kings. And I sat down with him in that vestry. He said, well, now, pastor, the lady who got baptized on Sabbath is my woman. I said, I know. She's God's daughter now. What are you going to do about that? Well, Pastor, we've been together for many years. He was a drunk card, and I could smell and see the drunkenness on him. We've been together for many years. We have children, and I just like to know that I want to join her and make my stand for Jesus. I said. <laughs> I looked at him with a smile. I said, you are a wise man. You wouldn't let a good woman go. And there are some church members. They are just awesome. They know how to put icing on cake. They made a wedding out of nothing. <laughs> it was the happiest day of the drunk card's life. They, he got baptized. The next time I went to preach at the church, they said, see the drunk car there? He's in a deacon badge. And the lady who's going to sing your song today for meditation is the lady who was baptized. Hallelujah. When you walk out by faith, God knows how to turn your story around. He drinks no more. He could not have gotten the victory over his addiction. But the walk by faith, God do something immediately that took him off that alcohol. He looks more handsome. He speaks more refined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
If you are going to walk down the Sabbath in the water of baptism, you need a faith that is uncommon. Yes. Yes. You're going to do something not because you know the way out, but because you know the God who carry you through. Amen. I tell you about one more uncommon faith. I've never seen this one before nor after. The guy Joshua was fighting a battle for the Lord. <laughs> and he realized that night was drawing on. And he wouldn't see well to complete this battle. Instead of giving up and saying, all right, night is coming down, call it, quit, blow the trumpet and end the war. Joshua looked up at God. And said, God, I'm going to ask you to do something I've never seen in all my life. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to hold that son up there. <laughs> Don't let it move, God, until I'm finished with this work for you. You hold that son right up there, God. That's a prayer I've never heard before. That's something I've never seen before. It has never happened in history. So he's not asking God to do something he's heard about. He's asking God to do the impossible. He's asking God to do something he's never seen in his lifetime. God, stop the son. And God can be entreated like that. He held it up there until Joshua was done with the battle. The sun went slowly down. And to answer that prayer means that God is going to affect the time zone, the whole universe. To answer one prayer. At faith. He's not the one that asks God to provide bread tomorrow morning when you already have some in the cupboard. That faith is the one that approaches God when you have no one to feed you and nothing is in the house. That faith is not the one that asks God to heal a common coal. That faith is the one that asks God to deal with a cancer. God is looking for more men and women who love him enough and spend more time with him to develop that kind of faith. He's hunting for sinners who would ask him, God, lift me from my doubt, take away my fears and give me that faith. He's hunting through and through your churches. He's looking through heritage to find one. He's searching through Berea to find one. He's looking through New Beginning and Parkdale and Toronto Central. He's searching through Canada and America and Japan and Cuba. He's looking for people that faith that is uncommon I don't know but I need it too it's so sweet hallelujah to trust mm. in Jesus do you know what it means to trust him just to take him at his yes word. sir he wants you to trust Just him. To rest Can you trust him with the rest of your life? Can you give him knowing he'll kick you through? Just to know Can you give him the rest that of that life? Can you trust him? Sing the song. Jesus, Jesus. Sing the song. How I prove him. How I Sing the song. More and more. And more. It is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace. To trust him more. Just before you sing the next time.
for those watching online I want to ask God to grant us this kind of faith because it's imperative that we hold this kind of faith in God to walk through the pearly gates you can please him with doubts there are many times you let God down because you never trust him to take you through Right now you're sleeping in the bed of adultery and fornication because you never trust God could keep you. My backsliding brother, my backsliding sister, your house is in trouble. I'm appealing to you, don't die there. There are times you've got to walk out of a relationship just to be saved. God will give you a new one. Sometimes you've got to walk off a job to walk through the pearly gates knowing that not your job but your God will take you through. And if you can't make that decision for Jesus, heaven will not be yours. But I'm appealing to you, my dear brother, my dear sister. Take that gadget you have in your hand and just put your name there and said, pray for me that I don't die this way. I can't die doubting God. I can't die distrusting him. I need to stop my crime and let God carry me through. Put that in the chat. We're going to pray for you. For my brothers, my sisters, my backsliding, my former member who used to be holding on to the Lord. He wants you back on the choir. He wants you back in the deacon body. He wants you back. But you can trust this God enough to live for him completely. But if tonight it's your determination that I am going to stop what I am doing. God and I know what we are doing and I'm going to stop. And I'm going to live my life completely. I'm going to make God be pleased with me. I'm going to do an uncommon thing. I'm going to do an uncommon thing. Would you raise your hand as they put a card into your hand? Raise your hand out there. Where are you? I'm going to do an uncommon thing. I'm going to use an uncommon faith. God, one way or the other, you've got to come through. But I am going to believe until my victory come. And you don't have to raise your hand. You can join the preacher at the altar as we pray together over that problem. We can put that problem in God's hands tonight. And we're going to put it in his hands tomorrow night. And we're going to keep putting it in his hands. Every day and every night, we're going to keep praying. If it takes us 21 days until the answer come, we're going to die trying. The church is standing. And if you are joining us for that special prayer, would you come all the way down? As we keep singing the song. Put it in the chat, my brothers, my sisters. I'm so glad or take that card on your screen and send your name through that card. Let's talk to God tonight about the problems that we are facing. Let's talk to him tonight about the faith that we need to possess. Come on down. Come on down as together we talk to him at the altar of prayer. My members, my visitors, can you put your faith one more time in the God who brought you here? Jesus, 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 how I trust him. Can you trust him? Can you trust him? Can you remain faithful, refusing to do wrong that God may come through for you? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace, for grace, to trust him more, before she sings, 
like the woman with the issue of blood you have that problem you have that mountain before you standing before you is that giant you don't want to face him but the giant is in the way of your victory there is no way out to experience victory until you face it I just want you to walk down here as together we ask God to give you the courage to climb the mountain to face the dragon to face that fear as together we ask God to give you that kind of faith I don't know pastor if there are requests online you can read them before we offer that prayer I don't know who you are and who you've been but this is what I do know with a change of attitude you can find victory tonight we are going to pray together pastor you've got prayer requests online there if you do find them let's pray together Jesus is coming is your another walk out of your fear into your faith you are so afraid even to walk to the altar. God, I give you no spirit of fear. You've got a bold mind. Step out. I don't care who want to see me. I don't care what they want to say. It's my life. It's my relationship. It's my God. I need this God to come through for me tonight. And I'm going to walk for myself. Come on, sister. To trust him more as we sing the song. Would you join us? Come on, if you're coming, come. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. How through Pastor Carwood, you're coming to pray for us. I want you to come pray for us, my pastor. Jesus, I see you. Come on, come on down. While he's coming, you keep coming. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more, to trust Him more. And if you're online, type that prayer request in the chat. Put it in there. We're covering them too. For grace to trust Him more. For you can come and read it, my pastor. To as we cover them, we bring them before God. Are they typing their request? Do you read them? And our pastor, our personal ministry director, will lift them up before God. Face your fears. Don't be cowards. God need people of faith. Perleen Buchan says, please pastor, pray for me. The way that I'm facing will go away. Mm. Simonette Harvey says, pray for me, pastor, also my family, my husband, son, my daughter-in-laws, my grandchildren, that we don't die out of Christ. Mm. We need to be saved. Gwendolyn Greaves says, we, should, uh, we all should put away fear and hold on to our faith. Teresa G says, I need to put away my fears and put my trust and everything Amen. to Jesus. Ernest Graham says, but the sun and moon stood still till the battle was won. Mm. Gwendolyn Greaves says, please pray for me. I, I know that our, our, our prayer warriors are online right now, and we want to make sure that we let them uh, know where they can get in touch with us, all right? J.J. Mitchell says, please change my heart, O God, for your glory. And Paula White says, please pray for the Barnes children. My pastor, you're going to pray for these. They're waiting, they're depending on us. And I am not, I'm going to ask those in the house, these online brothers and sisters are depending on your prayers. They need someone to help them through their darkest hour. They need a wall of prayer around them. Be their wall tonight. And even while God's man's servant is praying from this microphone, you be their wall and in your heart. God, pray for them. These at the altar are needing your prayers too. 
Here's a special one, preacher. Our evangelist says, pleasant evening. I'm from the Holy Ghost Church and uh, was lately introduced to your church by Brother Billy Reed. I watched the service today and it was a blessing. I'm asking for prayers for the leading of the Holy Spirit to worship with you. I am from Jamaica and I love to listen to Pastor Glenn Samuels. Yes. Come on, somebody. I need to know if what I was taught was right and actually and what I receive has been wrong. I don't need to be confused, so I need your prayers. I would also like to know if you have a free online Bible study in Jamaica so I can know more about the gospel. Well, please tell what's her name, what her name? I am not sure of the name. My dear sister who sent this request, we can reach you from anywhere in the world. Scan the QR code that's on your screen or click on that card and fill the information out. And before nightfall, one of our pastors here will get in touch with you. We have one, two, three, about maybe four or five pastors here. One of us will get in touch with you. And I am from Jamaica. It's not hard to find you. We are from a small country. Just fill that card out tonight. And before night gets too dark, one of us will reach you. My pastor, we've got them to pray for. Can we sing that song before pastor pray? I love to hear that name, Jesus. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Do you trust him, church? Lift your hands and let him know, I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. I have often proved you. I trust you, Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace. Trust him more. To trust him more. It's prayer time with your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Our loving God. Our Father. Who resides in heaven. But also resides in our heart. What an amazing God you are. What a loving Father you are to us. You are so loving that we can approach you directly, call you Abba, Daddy, and you listen to us and answers us. We thank you this evening for your manservant. We have allowed to come to these quarters to share your word, traveled hundreds of miles. You protected him and brought him here to stir our hearts, to remind us of your word, to remind us of the uncommon faith yes. that we need to have if we are to make it to the kingdom of God. We thank you for him troubling us. And those who had not heard your word in the past, the way it was presented. Tonight, you're troubled. Because now you recognize that there is a God in heaven who cares about us. So God, we present every listening person, whether in this auditorium or online. We ask, oh God, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to cause a civil war to occur in the hearts of men and women wherever they are. And do not give them rest, oh Holy God, until they have made up their minds to walk with Jesus Christ. He who allowed uh, the woman to touch the hem of his yes. garment and she was healed. He who allowed uh, three Hebrew boys yes. to walk in a furnace, yes. a fiery furnace uh, uh, and a guy named Nebuchadnezzar who didn't believe in God when he saw a fort, he said, and this must be the son of God. The son of God. Yes. 
So stir the hearts of men and women, oh God, this evening. And allow us all to be convinced that indeed we all need a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Allow us to embrace that Savior, oh God, and help us, those of us who have not yet made a decision for Jesus through baptism, that we will make that decision tonight. Because we don't hold tomorrow. Only you know what tomorrow holds. So God, take charge of each of us. We especially pray for all of the requests that were made online. You have heard them, Lord. You have already sent your holy angels dispatched with power from an eye to these places. And we ask that you will get close to these individuals and speak words of love and peace, kindness. Remind them that you are the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. We, we present those who have come forward uh, right here in this auditorium, oh God, and those who are signing up cards for you. We trust that everywhere people are, are enlisting in the army of Jesus yes. Christ. And so we pray for our young men and our sisters who have come forward who are indicating that they're willing to walk with Jesus Christ. In a, in a society where uh, young men and young women are losing their faith and, and losing trust in systems and governments and, and want to take charge of their own lives, we pray, Lord, that you will allow these young people who are here to present themselves and surrender themselves totally and completely into your care. Yes. That you would lead them and they would realize that no government can save them. No prime minister can save them. No premier can save them. No mayor can save them. No counselor can save them. No member of parliament can save them. No pastor can save them. But Jesus saves. Yes. And so they will give their hearts fully and completely into your care. God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word says that it will not return unto you void. And this evening we, we are testament to that fact because our hearts have been stirred. As we prepare to leave this place, those of us who are in this building, we pray God that your Holy Spirit will travel with us. And allow your words that were said this evening to continually resonate with us that we would recognize that there is a God who cares and loves us and wants to save us all. And for those who are in their homes, wherever they are, driving, but listening to your word preacher, may that same resonating occur so that they can be reminded all the time of the goodness of God. How good you are to us. So that all of us, Lord, at the end of it all, we would all place ourselves on the altar of sacrifice. We would surrender ourselves totally and completely into your care. You will save us, Lord. You, Jesus Christ, will save us to live with you eternally. Until that day, oh God, keep us faithful. Keep us trusting you because it's sweet. <laughs> 